Okay, so we just talked about applying LUTs to an image, and an LUT is a color filter. Like when you go on Snapchat or Instagram and you add a filter to your picture before you post it, you are applying an LUT. You're taking a color file, you're applying it on top of your image, and it's changing the color of your video or still image. Now, what if you don't want to use LUTs and you just want to independently for one picture change the color correction on that image it's very very easy we just need to go to filters on that image again so we can click filters here whilst the image is selected or we can right click and click filters and last time out we clicked apply lut we did this we did this we click browse we chose the lut to get grayscale and now we have a grayscale image I'm going to delete that filter because that's not what we're looking at right now. Instead, we're going to look at two of the other filters to help you with color correction. We have color correction and color grading. Let's do color correction first. So I'm gonna click on color correction. Uh, I'm just gonna leave the name as it is. And now we've got all of these little slider bars pop up that will help us change some of the color options in the image. First up, we have gamma. Gamma is basically controlling the amount of light in the image. So if I increase the gamma, then it will appear brighter and lighter. If I decrease, then the image will appear darker and kind of more bland. But let me put that back to zero and reset. Uh, gamma is actually quite helpful for removing. If you tend to get a shiny forehead or something like that, Gamma is actually quite helpful for removing those bright, shiny lights from your image. So if you do need to do that, have a play around with the gamma setting. Contrast is controlling the intensity of the opposition between colors. So what does that mean? That's a long sentence. What does it mean? It basically means if I increase the contrast, it increases or should increase the change in one color to another. And it will increase the depth of the image. If I reduce the contrast, it will reduce the depth of the image. Be careful not to increase your contrast too high or you will lose sight of the image altogether or too low and it will just look dark and gloomy and grim, basically. Let's put that back to zero, which is the default value for everything. Brightness, this is how much white light there is in the image. So if I increase the brightness, it's going to eventually become very white, but it will increase just the general brightness of the image. And if I decrease it, it will decrease the brightness of the image. Pretty simple there. Uh, saturation. Saturation is how much color do we want in the image. If I increase the saturation, it's going to make the color stand out more, be more prominent in the picture. So I'm going to increase and they're going to be extremely bright colors. And you can see the actual darker shades of the red disappear as I increase the saturation because it's just going for that one bright shade of red. And if I decrease the saturation, I desaturate the image. I've got just a grayscale image. So if you don't want to apply an LUT, you can always just come in here and be like, oh, I want to make my image grayscale. Boom. Saturation down. We've got a grayscale image. Back to zero. And next, probably the coolest feature on the color correction menu is hue shift. And hue shift basically takes your color palette and rotates it around the spectrum of colors. So if you change the hue, it will entirely change the color of your image. So if I take the hue here, it's on zero right now. If I increase it, all the entire spectrum of this image is rotating through the spectrum of colors. So you can see as I increase, the red changes to purple, then the purple changes to blue, and then the blue will change to green and so on and so forth. If you all know your rainbows. Again, similarly, if I uh, decrease the saturate uh, the hue shift value. It will go to orange and then orange to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's if you have a colorful image and you don't want to have the original color, then you can just switch it up using the hue shift. For example, if you had like a red square, but you didn't have an image file of a blue square, but you wanted a blue square, you could just change the hue of that red square and, and you'd have a blue square. So it's really, really handy for changing the color of images, like the specific color of the image. And then you have opacity. So if I 
decrease the opacity here. You can see in the stream preview, the image transparency increases and decreases as we go. Color multiply is mapping whites and blacks to different colors. So if I go to color multiply on the top one here and I change this to blue, it will map all of the white spectrum to blue. Uh, let me put that back, otherwise you're not gonna be able to see anything. And if I go to color add and I change the black to green, it will change all of the darker, blacker colors to green. Basically, I would not be touching uh, this particular setting unless you really know what you're doing, but that's color correction. So many different things that you can edit in this menu to change the color of an image. Now I'm gonna hide that filter just in case we made any changes. I don't think we did. You know what? I'm actually gonna remove it. Let's remove the color correction filter. And we're now gonna take a just a quick look at color grading. Now the likelihood is you will probably never need this particular filter. It's very complex, there's a lot of settings, but you might need it for certain images somewhere down the line. Take the color correction menu and just, you know, times it by a hundred. You've got so many more settings here to play with and you can individually lift certain colors out of certain areas of the image. So here I can lift the red out and we're removing red as I do this. I can remove green, blue. I can remove all of the colors if I want to by removing this or put it, sliding the slider down. Uh, the gamma, I can increase only the gamma on the red channel by doing so like this. I can increase only the gamma on the green channel by doing so like this. And of course I can decrease the amount of green in the image as well. Uh, it's not just gonna remove the green because underneath the green there are other channels of color. So again, if you don't really know your colors and, and uh, technical specifications of color grading, I, I wouldn't be using this filter too much. Just be very careful you don't ruin your image, but of course, if you do ruin your image, you can just remove the filter and then add it back on again. The gain, you can increase the amount of red, reduce the amount of red. Uh, offset, I mean, all of these, oh, that's 100% the default value, my mistake. Uh, offset, your red offset, again, doing very, very similar things. Make sure that's on zero. Uh, we've got a little bit of tint here as well. So if you want to add tints to your image, then you can come to this menu and do so. Again, oh, I've just closed the menu, haven't I? Let's go back in. Just trying to see if there's anything on here that will particularly add to your color correction needs. The best way to get your head around this is just to have a play around. Have a play around with the individual settings and see what they do. Again, you can always just remove the filter if you feel like you've messed up or uh, you know you wanna go back to your original image. So come here, have a play around. I would suggest that color correction, uh, I've been streaming for five years, I don't think I've ever used the color grading tool. In the first place, I try and find an image that is pretty close to what I want anyway, um, but it might be useful for things like webcams. It might be useful for things like live videos. So if you wanna have a play around with color grading, go ahead, be my guest. But for most of us, color correction is gonna do everything you want in OBS Studio.